from the hill.com has the story 62 percent in a new poll say that federal charges against trump are politically motivated that's from the quinnipiac university survey that was released on wednesday about these doj documents quinnipiac that is not exact that's not you know that's not some right wing uh paid for donald yeah. trump internal poll from his campaign or one of these super back polls that gets pushed around every time it's time to you know get more donations out no 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 this is quinnipiac this is a, if anything this is a poll that's that's going to diminish trump support and they're saying 62% of all voters mm -hmm. that's not even weighted yes. going into democrats independents etc look i think that people and specifically voters in this country to your point i think they're they're busy right? But they're not stupid. Yes. They may not be looking into all the little details of everything that Hunter did. They're not going to look into all the little details of everything they're alleging on Trump, but they can see the doubled standard, or in this case, triple standard. They can see that there is a different standard for those in power who are favored and those who are in power who are disfavored. And, and Seamus, this is something that you and I were talking about beforehand, and we're definitely going to get into this more in the members only hour, because this is the type of situation and Ian, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well. This is the type of situation that leads to instability. Yep. This is the type of situation that leads to people checking out of the system because they don't believe in the system anymore. This is the type of situation that says to people, look, if they come to arrest our guy, if they're using the power of the state, if they're using the power of force to go after our president, at the, our leader, our opposition leader. And if this was happening in any other country, we'd call it exactly what it is. Yeah. We call it exactly arresting our opposition leader, right? If this mm -hmm. happened, you know, this is something that when people go after Putin, they say, oh, Putin arrested his opposition leader. Right? Exactly. This is the main thing. And imagine if Trump had, right? Imagine if he actually had put Hillary Clinton in jail. Right. Exactly. I mean, well, then, it would be about how we're a, a fascist third world country. You you pointed out that about 60 percent of Americans see this as ideologically motivated when it comes to the charges against Donald Trump. Part of what concerns me as it's almost inevitably the case that some some number of that 60 percent of people not only believe it was politically motivated, but think that it was also a good thing. So some large number of people probably say it wasn't politically motivated, and that's why I believe justice is being served here. But there's likely a contingency that really does believe that this was politically motivated. And it's good that it was politically motivated because they believe in arresting their political opposition because they know that they're on the side of truth, virtue, etc. All the self-aggrandizing things that they would say to promote their ideology when it comes to this question of political instability i remember what we heard repeatedly through the 2020 riots in order to justify the violence that was happening in the streets was that rioting is the language of the unheard if that's true why are you trying so hard to silence the right in this country if you genuinely believe that people become violent when they don't have the proper political channels it is an outlet to have their voices heard what do you think is going to happen is if you arrest is the, the leader of the republican party a former president and the front runner for the upcoming election this is the problem right this is the problem this i mean this could what, this could get dangerous this is what leads people this, to instability this is what we've seen happen in country after country this is what leads people to say and we don't want this. I don't want this. No. I don't want my kids, I don't want- uh, Anyone who says they do is a LARPer. I don't want my family don't want to war. have to live through something like this. But at the same time, we also can play things out. And this is something that Tim Prime has been talking about here mm -hmm. on the show for years, for absolute years, saying that we're seeing this type of instability. Go back. Go. If you had told somebody 10 years ago, 10 years ago, that we would see the president of the United States' house raided, that we would see the opposition president arrested, that if you, and if you, if you take the lefts, uh, the left is out there saying there already was an insurrection. Okay. They, that's their claim. They're the ones who have already said that the insurrection had 1.0 already began. And so you are pushing people further and further out of the system. At the same time, when you refuse to look into, and YouTube says we can talk about this now, if you refuse to look into election irregularities, if you refuse to look into the way that ballots are counted, the way that ballots are done, because we threw generations of traditions out the window in the name of COVID in 2020, then doubled down on it in 2022 in places like Maricopa County where uh, where Kerry Lake's voters were turned away in droves saying that, oh, we can't vote, we can't count, the ballots are not printed right, put them in door three. Oh, don't worry, door three is gonna be fine. These Maricopa County machines, et cetera, et cetera. Don't worry, it'll, it'll all be counted, it'll be taken care of. People turned away, they went but home. I, I'll, I'll present And when you don't, when you, 
last point is when people don't believe in the integrity of the system, it leads them to seek alternate options. Yep. Yeah, but I, I would also argue, because again, I'm, I'm in Los Angeles, we, you know, one of the things that I, uh, I do differently than I, I would argue a lot of people is that I'm directly involved with the community. And and I, I know what, what their needs are, I know what they're asking for, but the reality is, is that, you know, and I'll be honest, I voted for Donald Trump 2020, but his biggest fault is to continue to push that narrative. And it's great. You can believe in irregularities, et cetera. But, but guess what? Out in Florida, uh, you know, you had some of the strictest election laws passed by Ron DeSantis. Democrats are still winning in 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 Florida. You have people that, you know, are uh, winning in mayoral seats out there in Florida. Why? Because Republicans, I'll be very honest with you, man. Republicans are... Sometimes losers. I'd say about over 90% of Republicans, conservatives, Christians, they have this defeatist attitude, this doomer Amen. attitude about everything. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that flee California. I'll be honest with you. I, I've planted my banner of Christ in Los Angeles. I have no plans on leaving ever because I, I refuse to cede a single inch to godless people, to the communists, whatever it is. I, I kind of hate... And I am kind of like kind of sick and tired of seeing conservatives often post, you know, and Jack uh, or Tim 2.0, I apologize for this. But sometimes when, when we tell people like it's time to flee the cities, it's like, dude, when, when you're at war, you need to reinforce warriors on the front lines. And you saw you saw it for yourself, man. You you came to Los Angeles. Uh, you, you got to see all the Catholics out there. You saw the Protestants out there fighting back. Armenian parents are starting to fight back, man. Like, in no way, shape, or form can I believe, and I'm new to this party. I, I was never political before. I, I didn't even vote 2016. I'm new to the conservative side. Uh, I just believe that due to my uh, Christian upbringing, I'm just naturally conservative. And, you know, my whole family votes Republican now. But it's alarming to me to see the party of 1776ers, the, you're not going to take my guns, the, you know, we need to fight back convincing people, convincing Christians, this, this is the most alarming to me, is you need to abandon all these parts of America and just flee for safety. And the problem with that is it's not going to be the ballot harvesting. Is Wisconsin just overturned the Supreme Court, right? The, 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 the Supreme Court on, at the state level. Arizona just went blue. We're not winning swing states. Why? Because we are convincing conservatives and Christians, abandon all hope. It's time to head to high ground and People are going to one of three places, Tennessee, uh, uh, Texas, or Florida. There is no Christian, there is no conservative saying, you know what, maybe our votes don't count here in California. Maybe we should move to swing state Michigan and help make it more red. That's not the message being promoted. And when you have, a, 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 again, a, a, no, no, no fault to Trump, maybe a little bit of fault. But if you, all you're doing is going around telling people the system is rigged, there is no hope. Look, in my county, our, we had a Republican state assemblywoman, and she lost by 577 votes. The reason she lost was because over 30,000 Republicans in my district didn't want to go vote. They're like, what's the point? If and, and the thing is, when you have Christians, this is, again, if you're, you know, atheist, if you are, you know, a liberal or more libertarian, I can maybe understand it. But if you're a Christian conservative, your message to Christians should never, ever, ever be. I mean, dude, his disciples of Jesus Christ were sent to the most extremist places on earth. And he said, you will be persecuted for it. So to me, it's kind of alarming to see so many. And so it's it's not going to be the ballot harvesting. It's just, there's going to be no Republicans left. And, and to, to talk about the institutions, you know, people want to be upset at Elon Musk because he hired, you know, this NBC person. But what conservative is out there telling people, hey guys, don't flee the cities, actually become a judge become a lawyer so that we actually have a fair fight at, at w when it comes to crimes. Oh, but the radical DA. Okay, but who's running against that DA? Where are our conservatives? I mean, there's so many red well, say people, so, yeah, people, you know, well, people flee things. to Florida. Their people flee to Texas and, and they're harboring all this power and money. But then those states are also not becoming as red as people want to say. So now we're losing Wisconsin. We're losing swing states. We just lost Arizona. I, I wish I, I could sit here and tell you it's the ballot harvesting. It's not. It's just that Republicans have been convinced it, it's all over. This is it. Donald Trump didn't win. Bro, let me tell you something, man. Like, it, it's way more than Donald Trump. It is you at the local level. There's so many people that have fl fled California to safe states. They've never ever helped a campaign, never donated $5 to a local school board member. And they're just like, oh, I'm done. And I'm like, but you never started. 
What's, you just well, you just so, listen to your local conservative that said it's time to leave California. There's a senator Scott Wilk who just said that there was one bill that was well, just passed uh, in California. Well, let's let's. let's, let's I, I, I think quick, I think uh, there's a couple a things response, to to deconstruct here. Firstly, I don't entirely disagree with you. Uh, I think there is some wisdom in saying it could be good for conservatives to move to swing states as opposed to states that are already solidly red, so they can help those states turn red or flip red in, in local elections and particularly presidential elections that would be massively helpful however i think a person ultimately does have to make the decision that's best for their own family and if they're concerned about moving to a state where their child is going to be told by some groomer teacher that they're actually a member of the opposite sex and then put on puberty blockers and then the child can be taken from the parent i would say that's a realistic concern to think about and so it makes sense for people to say i'm going to go to a solidly red state because while you're correct the apostles did go to dangerous places at some point it is time for Lot and his family to leave Sodom and Gomorrah because it's going to be destroyed. Uh, and I'll also say, if your plan is to go into Nineveh and convert those people, you'd better be a Jonah, right? And even Jonah had his flaws, but you, you, you really have to be in a solid place, I think, to be capable of persuading people, especially in a very uh, dark area, uh, a very evil area of embracing truth so while on the one hand i think some of what you're saying is admirable about wanting to stay and fight and not giving up your territory i totally hear all of that that said it's perfectly reasonable for somebody with a family to say you know what i see what's coming down the pike here i see the the christian persecution that's ahead of us and i want to get my family somewhere more safe where they can flourish do you, do but you, look, man, I, I, I have I have three children, mm -hmm. a 16, 14, and seven years old. All of them are in public education. They see what's happening with the public education in Los Angeles. But it is my job as a father, first and foremost, and also as a parent, to teach them. They're exposed to LGBTism. I tell them, hey, we are, we are Christians. We don't believe in everything that they believe. We believe marriage is between one man and one woman. And guess what? My son just got baptized last year. Despite LAUSD and the public education, everyone wants to, like, oh, get them out of the schools. But why? I mean, you know, it's a relatively good school outside of some of the stuff that they are teaching them. But my son, 16 years old, I was able to raise him, raise him right. He's a Christian young man. He got baptized last year. My daughter, 14 years old, she just accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, got baptized just a couple weeks ago. The reality is that it is your job as a parent to parent. You know, people say like, oh, I don't co-parent with the government. Dude, if you pay taxes, you're already co-parenting because you're funding a lot of stuff that are going to affect your children, are going to affect everything that you do in life. And the reality is, if I'm able to do it, and, and, and I agree with you, there are some people that really have to go, but I think it should be a last measure. You know, there was a, a, a post by Cat Turd. He posted, you know, here's five rules to save your family. Uh, rule number one, Get the hell out of your blue state. Second one is go buy land in the middle of nowhere uh, uh, in, a, in a red state. The third one is grow your own food. Fourth is homeschool your children. Five, pat yourself in the back because you just saved your children. Bro, there's a lot of homeschool uh, 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 kids that are not right. You know, like just because you homeschool, it, it's not a promise of of be uh, uh, of of being raised right, or you're not going to be raised in conflict. There's a lot of people that homeschool, and unfortunately, their children go off to college or university or whatever it is. But my my argument is not against people that hey, if it's right for you. But the reality is, a lot of the people that I speak with that leave California, it's because of one thing, and it's 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 mostly economical. And they're like, hey, you know what? Uh, my, my house has become, I can't buy a house out here, whatever it is. Um, uh, you know, and, and so I need to move to a different state to pay lower taxes, to, be, to pay less in, in gas prices, et cetera. But I, I just don't believe in that personally, man. I, I just don't, I don't think I was put on this earth to pay low gas prices. I'll deal with the gas prices by working harder, making more money. And I, and I get the children's stuff, but it, it, you know, let my testimony not be the standard or to be exalted, but to show to people, dude, even in deep blue Los Angeles on the front lines of communism where Antifa and Black Lives Matter basically run the city council dude here we are baptizing kids because there is a need for that and let my children you know my son when he started school last year he's in he's going to 11th grade now he's like hey dad just to let you know there's two trans kids that are are, are changing out in our locker room like well what do you mean by that they're like well it's two girls that pretend to be boys and so they're allowed to be in the locker room you know what i told them i didn't tell them like oh you better start standing up i just said you know what son that is their lifestyle we don't agree with it. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.